This is a 10 hit, 54.2% combo that requires knowledge of several micro interactions and even depends on your controller. In this video, I will break down each step in detail and discuss how this knowledge can be applied to any character. Link is one of my favorite characters in Ult because he allows you to express yourself through several different playstyles and can use virtually any of the advanced techniques available in the game. My personal preferred style is using his bombs and aerials to set up overwhelming pressure sequences. I often feel like I'm using the bomb as shine pressure from melee. One of the key components to this pressure is the use of attack cancels. Here's a quick recap of attack cancels for the uninitiated. Since Brawl, any character has had the ability to jump backwards out of a run. This technique is called a Reverse Aerial Rush, or RAR. A RAR allows you to approach an opponent with a backwards facing move, usually back air. You perform this by running and pressing back before hitting jump. This is very easy to perform in Smash Ultimate as the timing is very lenient. The timing is not so lenient when you try to perform a RAR out of initial dash. The initial dash is the distance your character dashes before transitioning to a full run. This is easy to visualize for a character like Banjo and Kazooie. Just remember that Banjo performs the initial dash and Kazooie performs the run. The initial dash is a fixed length, unlike Melee where you can dash out of your initial dash at any point, allowing for more nuanced microspacing. Attack cancels trivialize the difficulty of a RAR out of initial dash. I won't go into too much detail on the mechanics behind attack cancel aerials or AC aerials, but here are the key points. Most people try to perform AC aerials with either L or R set to attack, but I find that to be unnecessary. By setting C-Stick to tilt, you simply dash, press backwards on the C-Stick, then hit Y with your index finger. This just requires a transition to the claw grip, which you can use all the time or just when performing attack cancels. I do the latter. Once you practice the claw grip, you'll find that executing AC aerials is very easy and doesn't require drastically changing your controls layout. For a character like Link with a fast bear, the ability to get a running start into a RAR bear in initial dash lets you combo both into and out of your AC bear. And this is how we start the 10 hit combo. Congrats, we're two hits in, only eight more hits to go. But first I should note, in order to combo off of Link's AC bear in particular, it's important to fast fall so that you can combo out of the bear. The first use I found for this was just comboing into more AC bears. You can link into AC bear two or three times, and on some characters you can combo it into a buffered up B at the end of the combo. To get the fast fall, you just need to hold down after the kicks connect. You hold it too early, you won't fast fall. Once you get a feel for the timing, it's pretty consistent. Okay, now we're one fifth of the way to 10 hits. After the AC bear, I perform a turnaround down tilt. This turnaround down tilt is actually a lot trickier than it appears at first. Thanks to the tilt stick, you can actually perform turnaround tilts using the C-Stick without risk of an accidental smash attack. But for some reason, the angle on reverse up tilt and down tilt using tilt stick is extremely precise. You can see here that I miss it several times, often getting accidental turnaround F tilts, or up and down tilt in the wrong direction. Some people have attempted using notches on their C-Stick to make angle tilts easier, but the game actually reads your C-Stick input before you hit the gate, so notches are actually useless. I find that buffering turnaround tilts is much more forgiving when using the control stick and the attack button. This is especially useful for Link, because down throw turnaround up tilt is much more consistent than regular up tilt. You can see that when I attempt to buffer a turnaround up tilt with C-Stick, even when I'm holding back, I can accidentally get a regular up tilt. With the analog stick, the window feels much more forgiving. If you have angle notches on your analog stick, you can actually use the upward angle notches to help buffer your turnaround up tilts by sliding along the gate until you find your notch and holding A. But we need to talk about down tilts. I've already established that the control stick is more consistent for setting up up and down tilt than the tilt stick is, but we aren't out of the water yet. For the down throw turnaround up tilt, we have plenty of time to find the angle we need, but in the 10 hit combo, we have far less time to set up the attack. What I've found is that using the bottom left or bottom right corner of your analog stick's gate allows you to perform a turnaround down tilt, unless you buffer it. For some reason, the exact same angle when buffered will give you a turnaround F tilt. This actually applies to both up and down tilt. But yeah, this is pretty annoying. While it's still possible to buffer turnaround down tilt, the angle is quite difficult to get in the middle of a fast combo, but I've found a sort of shortcut. There are multiple components to this next step. The first is this discovery I made in Melee. 
If you fast fall and hold down, you can actually go from midair directly into a crouching animation. I made a video on why this is significant for vanilla melee last year, so I won't go into detail now. The important part is that you can fast fall and bypass the crouching animation, then easily access the turnaround down tilt angle that you need. I want it to be even faster out of the bear and tried using the down tilt angle as my fast fall input. This means I wouldn't need to slide from down to diagonal to get the down tilt. Instead, you fast fall using the diagonal. This actually works pretty nicely so long as you time the down tilt input rather than buffer it. If you recall, buffering a turnaround down tilt at this angle just gets you a turnaround F tilt. It actually gets crazier. While testing this, I realized that if you fast fall using a backwards diagonal input, you'll actually land crouching facing the opposite direction. This is actually super useful and an important piece of movement tech that everyone should know. Any character with a good down tilt can use a backwards jump to threaten either bear or an empty land turnaround down tilt, or even use this as an easier way to fast fall, land, and get a turnaround standing grab. That all being said, congratulations, now you know how to land the first three hits of the 10 hit combo. We're 30% of the way there, or I guess 23%. Or 42% depending on how you look at it. If you aren't a melee nerd, I guarantee this next portion will be new information for you. I found that most ultimate players are, understandably, not as knowledgeable about their controllers as melee players who have obsessed over controllers for years. I'm here to help bridge that gap today. Remember when I said how difficult it was to perform an instant RAR out of initial dash, and that using attack cancels we could bypass the difficult input to get an instant RAR short hop back air? Sorry, but now we have to actually input an instant RAR, no cheats. Attack cancels only let us perform short hop aerials because we're leveraging the buffer system. To connect the next back air after the down tilt, we actually need an instant RAR full hop back air, and this time there's no shortcut. Many players can already perform this, especially Roy and Krom players who need this technique in order to land jab to full hop bears for the kill. If you played Smash 4 or Melee, an easy way to transition into this input is imagining it as a pivot input. You just have to hit the jump button immediately after the pivot. The timing is pretty tight, but it's honestly not too bad with some practice. If you master this input, you actually don't really need attack cancels anymore, but I still like to use them because it's far easier for the short hop aerial inputs. Not too bad so far, right? Well, what if I told you your ability to execute this technique is actually controller dependent? Here, you can see I'm getting the full hop RARs pretty consistently, but what if I switch controllers? For some reason, on the second controller, this input seems far less consistent. Melee players might know where I'm going with this. The second controller suffers from a condition called Potentiometer Oddity Degradation Effect, or PODE for short. Historically, this is a long sought after trait of controllers for melee players because it provides more consistent dashbacks in vanilla melee. There's actually an error in how the controller reads your inputs, so you will perform more consistent dashbacks. Here's a direct comparison on how both of these controllers perform at executing dashbacks in vanilla melee. One major drawback of Pode is that it limits your controller's ability to perform other techniques such as PC drops and pivots. Let's tie this back to ult. As I mentioned, the instant RAR input is quite similar to a pivot input in Melee, so a controller that has difficulty performing one will have difficulty performing the other. There is a fix to this. There's not much need for Pode in Melee these days outside of a few special cases, and to my knowledge there's no benefit of having it in ult. So now I'll show you how to remove Pode from any controller. You'll need a tri-wing screwdriver. I'll breeze through some of the details, so I recommend looking up a guide on taking apart your controller. Basically, you're removing the screws from the back with your tri-wing, then separating the shells to get to the circuit board. Take the stick cap off your analog stick, and you'll see two black clips on your stick box. These are the potentiometers. The one on the side is your Y potentiometer, or vertical potentiometer, and the one on the bottom is your X, or horizontal potentiometer. Unclip them with a moderate amount of force from your nail. Blow inside each, then rotate the stick a few times and repeat. Clip them back on, and voila, your potentiometers have been reset. 
I will note that some controllers are far more likely to develop Pode than others, and truly developing Pode is actually quite a rare feature, so chances are you don't have to worry about this, especially if you have one of the newer Smash logo controllers from the last few years. But if you do have a controller that develops Pode over time, it's likely that even after resetting your potentiometers, it would regain Pode with enough use. In that case, you can simply reset the potentiometers again. And now your controller is good as new. Congrats! You can now consistently land instant RARs and continue our 10-hit combo. We are now 5 hits in. The last bit of the combo is the buffered up B. What you want to do is hold up B as soon as you start the instant RAR back here. Then maybe grab a drink or check your phone, because the buffer system will literally do the rest for you. And that's it! That's the 10-hit combo. It's a very specific combo and depends on DI and only works with Link. But as you can see, it's the culmination of many specific pieces of game knowledge coming into play and touches on many unique aspects of the game. I hope you find this information helpful, and let me know in the comments if you have ideas on how to apply any of these texts in new ways. As always, thanks for watching.